Hi everybody. Sorry I haven't posted in a while, but you know, we got some stuff to talk about. One of the things is prayer. Why do we pray and how does prayer help us and help others? So real quick, we're going to start this off with a prayer. So if you don't mind joining me, here we go. Lord Jesus, I come to you today asking you to fill me with the Holy Spirit. Give me the words to speak to these people so that they may understand your will. Give me everything that I need to make this uh, video as understanding as possible and so that people know in the future what your true intentions are. Please, please guide my tongue, sanctify my tongue, and help me and my family in the days to come to do your will and help whoever is behind this screen and whatever they're dealing with and I hope that their prayers are answered as well. I give you all the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. So, prayer. Why do we pray? We Well, one of the biggest misconceptions about prayer is that we pray so that we can get the things we want, so that we can get the things we need. But in all actuality, that's not what prayer is for. Now, it does say in the Bible, ask and ye shall receive. That doesn't necessarily mean you will always receive it. You know, uh, I was talking to my wife earlier today and I gave a uh, analogy about, say you're driving along the road and you pop a tire. You don't know how to change a tire, so you call your dad and you say, Dad, I, I, I blew a tire. I really need your help right now. Can you come help me change this tire? Yeah, 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 I'll, I got some things I got to do first and then uh, I'll be right there, okay? You start getting impatient and you start calling your uh, dad, blowing him up. Dad, where are you? I need you right now. Dad, where are you? Oh my gosh, I can't believe you didn't, you know, you're not there for me. You're never there to support me. You're never there to help me. I can't believe you did this. Blah, 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 blah. Like you're, like, you're supposed to be my father. You're supposed to be there to help me. You're not here right now. And you're just getting really, really impatient because your father is not there helping you right this second. Well, your dad calls you back and he's like, okay, I tell you what, hot shot. You want to get mad at me? You want to cuss me out on the uh, phone? You want to you wanna be impatient? Figure it out. You do all this stuff by yourself. Figure it out. You figure out how to change that tire. Unless you want to apologize to me and relax. Yes, sir. Or you say F you and hang up the phone. Now you're stuck in the middle of nowhere. You have no idea how to change that tire. You don't know if anybody's going to drive up to help you. You're lost, but you're angry at your father because your father said he would be right there as soon as he could. You got impatient. You got angry. Or there's even cases where your father is like, you need to learn how to take care of yourself. Sorry about that. Uh, but so, you know, sometimes your father is like, look, you need to learn how to take care of this. Like you need to learn how to be a little bit more tough. So I'm going to let you deal with it for a minute. And then I'm going to come and help you. And to you, that might seem cruel, but sometimes as a father, sometimes a father has to teach his children a lesson. Sometimes I have to tell my son, figure it out, dude. Like, I can't help you right this second. I'll be there when I can. But try to figure it out in the meantime. It's, it's, it's going to uh, be like that sometimes. You guys want everything now, 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 now. And if God doesn't answer your prayers right away, you get angry and you blame him. And you, she's walking around with a wad of cash in her hands. You want everything now, 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 now. For instance, I just sent my kids into uh, a restaurant to buy their food because they, they wanted something to eat. So I said, here, go get it yourself. You have to teach uh, your kids life lessons. You have to give them the opportunity to screw up. Because that promotes growth. You know, it goes back to that old saying, and I know a lot of y'all are going to be like, cringe, cringe. What doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. You build up calluses over time. I've worked in restaurants for years. 
and holding a knife, I've built up calluses on my hands from holding a knife, where pieces of my skin have gotten harder from uh, holding a particular object over the years, and, you know, it gets to a point where you can hold hot things with your hands without burning yourself. You just get stronger over time. And sometimes people are like, well, I deal with so much, I deal with so much. It's like, God is toughening you up. That's what you don't realize. But I saw a video earlier today from Insta Church, which if you guys don't know, that's Alan Richardson's uh, YouTube channel. The guy who plays Reacher, he played Raphael in the 2015 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies. But, you know, um, there was a Satanist girl complaining about somebody who made a TikTok video saying that God answered their prayers. And they brought up, like, what about the starving children? What about the children that are getting great? And I'm like, okay, that is a very, very bad situation. And yes, something should be done about it. But what are you saying to the humans who are committing these atrocities? What are you saying to the people in the country that are harboring their own money and not feeding these people? Because it is our responsibility our responsibility to take care of our uh, brothers and sisters to take care of each other and then you see people like Mr. Beast who has all this money and he doesn't keep any of it for himself he, he keeps just enough to uh, live somewhat comfortably he has a, a house with a gate on it because somebody broke in and stole all of his stuff but, you know, he also has a Tesla because it's good on gas, you know, which is good for him. Good for him. But he also uses his money to build wells in third world countries. It still doesn't win. Like, people still complain about him and say, oh, well, he's trying to be a white savior. He's trying to do blah, blah, blah. The government, the local government should be taking care of that. And it's like, well, you guys always say... Why doesn't God answer the prayers of the people who were hungry and needy? He did. He sent Mr. Beast to help them. To me, that's divine intervention. That's God enacting, using us to enact his will. Okay, well, what about the children that are uh, are getting raped and going into uh, human trafficking? Look at the movie The Sound of Freedom. God is answering those prayers. He uses us in order to enact his will. Look at, you know, companies like Thorn, you know, who go out and, you know, like, break up uh, human sex trafficking rings. And yet, a lot of these people, a lot of these politicians, now I'm not left or right, we're not going to get into a whole political thing, but a lot of these politicians that you guys love so much are perpetuating the cycle of sexual abuse and sex slavery. Which to me is demonic. It's satanic. It's it's very it's the furthest away from God that you can get. And a lot of these politicians will lay their hands on the Bible and swear in. Laying your hand on the Bible and swearing in doesn't mean anything if you don't believe it. And these guys are wicked. And that list is doctored. You know what list I'm talking about. That list is doctored. Those ain't all the names. Why would they wait so long to release it because they were worried about whose name was in there. So they redacted a lot of those names. I'm telling you. You guys have to stop putting your blind faith in human beings and put your faith in God. And God will use human uh, beings in order to enact his will. It says in Genesis for what they intended for evil, God intended for good. Joseph said this to his brothers when they apologized to him for selling him into slavery. He said, what you intended for evil, God intended for good. And a lot of you are going to say, well, uh, Dwight, how does God intend rape to be good? Well, he didn't put those kids in that situation. However, look at, um, look at, what's her name? Uh, from North Korea who escaped North Korea now she's going out 
and speaking against dictatorship. And she was great along the way, escaping to freedom. God used those wicked things that happened to her in order to get that message out so that people could be saved. Did he mean for her to be great? Absolutely not. But he took a horrible situation and he brought some good out of it. Again, in no way, shape, or form am I saying that graping somebody is good. But the message that comes from somebody who went through all that and came out smelling like a rose is an incredible story that needs to be told and it does help people. She didn't wallow in her self-pity. She didn't crawl into a corner. Now, I, I, I feel for you people who have encountered that, men, women, and children. Members of my own family have gone through this. And I feel for you, and I understand that it can break your soul, that it can break your mind, and that it can destroy you. And I pray for you, and I really, really hope that you come out of this. But I will say, out of all that darkness, out of all that evil, there are some heroes who step forward to help people who are in the corner, rocking back and forth, shriveling, crying, feeling horrible about themselves because these horrible things that happen to them. And then you've got people who put their hand on their back and say, I know. Who can understand that point of view and help those people. That is what I mean by God can take evil and use it for good. I hope you guys understand that because I feel like there are going to be some people who are just going to come after me and be like, oh, you know, uh, uh, Christ Court Kid is trying to say that, you know, grape is good. I'm not, no, that's not it at all. Don't turn my words against me because I know a lot of you uh, people will. And here come the Satanists and the atheists. Coming after uh, me with the pitchfork, saying, you know, like, I need to be canceled and I don't need a platform to speak because what, my, uh, what I say is dangerous. And it's like, use your head, man. What did I just say? So we pray for these people. We pray for the children that are getting trafficked. We pray for the people in third world countries who don't have clean drinking water, who don't have food. You know? With clean water comes more crops. I mean, look at the Euphrates River. The Euphrates River is dry right now and people are struggling because they got a lot of their uh, their agriculture from the Euphrates River, from that part of the world. So without a water source, it's difficult to grow crops. It's difficult to get food. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when you pray for these third world countries and God sends somebody like Mr. Beast to go and build wells so that people have clean drinking water and clean water in general so that they can grow crops, he's answering your prayers. You know, praise God that he's answering your prayers. When somebody comes in and they bust up a child sex trafficking ring, and save all these kids from, you know, getting sold to, you know, some sheik in Saudi Arabia. Or some politician who just wants to diddle little kids, you know, like, your prayers were answered. They got saved. They got taken out of that horrible situation and put with families that love them and care about them. And for the adults, like, they, you know, they can start rebuilding. Some of them don't make it. Some of them commit suicide, and I pray for those poor souls. But we can't win them all. Because when God created us, he gave us the free will to choose. We can choose to do great good, or we can choose to do great evil. We can choose him, or we can choose the devil. 90% of the time, y'all choose the devil. And y'all want to blame God. But you chose the devil. Remember that. You chose the wickedness. You chose the evil. You chose to not beckon the most powerful being in the universe to help. And you told him, screw off. So he did. He gave you your wish. He screwed off. What good is a Superman if you hate him?
even in Sodom and Gomorrah, like Alan Richardson talked about this in his video. They were raping children. I didn't use the the other word, but who cares? They were they were doing that to children and to each other. That's why that city was so wicked it had to be destroyed. And yet you'll still uh, be like, well, you know, there had to have been innocent people. Abraham beckoned God and said, if there is one righteous man in that whole city. <coughs> will you spare it? And God said, yes, there was not one. It's sad, I know. But I want to read to you guys a verse from Isaiah chapter 1, or a few verses. Just ahead, keep right. We'll start at 15. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make prayers, I will not hear, your, uh, hear you. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. That's 16. 17. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, Amen. saith the Lord. Okay, thank you. Though your skin sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. I'm telling you guys. Prayer is not something that you just ask for, you know, a new Bentley. Guys. Escape. Thank you. Have a good one. So this is something that we're going to have to come to an understanding about. Is that this isn't... Praying to God isn't an Amazon wish list. Praying to God is a relationship with your Father. You pray to God to have a relationship with Him. So that whenever you do want to help people, He can give you that ability. We as Christians have spiritual gifts for a reason. Mine in which is the gift of the tongue. I, I, I have a great capacity to speak to people. And people seem to be magnetically drawn to me for some reason. I'm very charismatic. I'm very friendly. I'm very joyful. I can also be very stern. And people listen to me. But you have to listen. A closed mouth never gets fed. Have you ever heard that statement? I've heard it since I was a child. If you don't ask, how is God going to know to help you? If you don't talk to him, how is he going to know you? Flip those around. If you don't talk to God, how is he going to know you? And if you don't ask, how is he going to know to help you? Your father loves you. All he wants to do is help. But you keep spitting in his face. You keep ignoring him. And then you ask, God, I don't know. It blah, 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 but you know, like, I really need help right now. And then when you don't get it right away, right that second, you're like, man, screw this, screw God, screw blah, 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 blah. You really think he's going to help you? You keep spitting in his face. Look at your own father, look at your own mother. You think they would help you if you keep spitting in their face? You keep abusing them? You people abuse your Heavenly Father. You do. You really, really do. 
and yet you have your hands out at the same time. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. don't you hate me? Why do you want anything from me? Y'all can do whatever you want. But don't blame God whenever he doesn't do something. It falls on you. It's your responsibility. Like I said, God uses humans to enact his will. Do you want to see God's will enacted? You want to see God help people? Why don't you be the reason that prayer gets answered, huh? Why don't you do something? Quit sitting on your butt, questioning things. Go out there and do something. You can't complain about it if you ain't doing nothing yourself. Making TikTok videos about how you can't stand Christians is not helping people. Why don't you put that time, that effort into doing something good instead of just whining about everybody else? All of this is said with love at the end of the day. All of this is said with love. I, it, it does irritate me, but just understand, I love each and every one of you. In Jesus' name, I love each and every one of you. Through all my brothers and sisters in Christ, all of my brothers and sisters who have not found Jesus yet, I love you guys. I just, I want to see you do better. Listen to your big brother. Don't listen to your big brother. I'm just, I'm trying to help you stop screwing up, bud. I'm here for you. Like I said, you can listen, you can not listen. We're going to do whatever we can to uh, be better, but at the end of the day, it all comes down to you. Make the choice. Do better. Be bold. Stay epic.